and I'll take you through all the steps that I'll be doing. This is my reference image on my tablet. I like working from the tablet because the colours are very true and bright and vivid and then I uh, can zoom in and out as I want to get detail. If you're with me on Patreon, I'll be, I've already posted the reference image for this so you can download it and print it off and, and paint along with me or paint along later if you like. I have here a pre-stretched canvas. So you can see it's already stretched onto its frame. I'm going to put it on my easel now. A bit of a and leave it there. A bit of a tip for you: if you don't have an easel, if you're starting out and you don't have a studio or, or, or a lot of the equipment that comes with collecting it over the time, don't worry. When I first started painting acrylics, I had a corner of my lounge room. I, and it's made out of weatherboards. I took a couple of screws, screwed them into the wall, and I would hang my canvases on the wall with a, a small desk from, this, from the uh, tip shop, the recycling shop, that cost me $5 underneath it. And that was my studio, and I painted like that for a number of years. So you don't need a big setup. I'm lucky enough to have a, a couple of easels in the studio, and I've put them on casters so I can move them around into different positions. So for this painting, this is an already prime canvas. I don't need to do anything to it. I can just paint straight onto it. I do want to do a bit of underpainting for this and I'll talk about it as I'm going. It's a fairly simple scene. Now, this is the first painting, full painting demo that I'm going to be doing for you in acrylics. I wanted to keep it simple, but at the same time, I wanted to show you a number of different techniques for water, for sky, for some vegetation, but keep it in a fairly simple style. And I think this covers all those things. We've got vegetation here, we've got a distant headland, we've got a lovely sky, gra graduated sky, some beautiful strip of water there, sand and this creek that's running down into it with some quite vibrant colour from the tannins in the water which we get here in Tasmania. What I'm going to be doing is just covering my canvas with a very loose wash of colour to help get rid of all the white. I don't want any of the white to poking through the painting later on and, and just annoying my eyes. I'm going to give it a little cover of paint. What I like to use for m many of my paintings is a little combination wash of a yellow ochre and a raw sienna and I'll just mix those up and put them all over my canvas. Except in the area where there's green vegetation. There I like to put a little bit of red because red and green are complementary colours. And what it will do is give me a bit of a zing when some of that shows through the overpainting. So in that area, I'm going to be using permanent alizarin. So they're going to be the three colours that I'm going to use in my underpainting. So a bit of the raw umber and a bit of the yellow ochre. And then I'm just going to add in a little bit of water. So I'm just going to dip my brush in the water. I keep a, a cut down lawn new liquid um, container because I don't have any water in my studio and I just keep a bucket of that there. It's very easy to dip brushes into having cut the side in the hole. So I'm just mixing that up now, making it quite loose. Just wiping off that um, palette knife on a, a clean cloth. I'm going to add in a little bit of, decided to go for a little bit of the burnt sienna dipping that brush back in the water just mixing it all around and I'm not mixing it up too much I don't want it too mixed so I just take the um, paint and just move it all, all around all over the, to the whole canvas is covered I'm going to do everything first even the spot where the vegetation is going to be move on to the bit of red underneath the vegetation in a moment as this is going on I'm not really caring in which direction I'm going I'm just moving it around sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of just random movement in the underpainting and like I said earlier it's just to cover up all the white 
as a starter. That's pretty much the underpainting done. You can see it's a very pale wash. I just want it to knock back the white a bit. Once that's dry, I'll then go in and sketch up the composition. Then I'll pop in the red underpainting behind the trees. I've laid out the colours I'm going to be using for the painting. I have three blues, an ultramarine, a thallo blue, and a turquoise blue. So they're the three blues I'm going to be using. I also have mixed up on the palette left over from my last painting some blues that I used in the sky. So I'll be mixing those in with some of the thallo and some white to make a graded sky. I've only got one green out and that's a green gold, an Australian green gold, which I'll be using for some highlights and, and mixed in with some blues for the trees. I have a yellow, which is a cadmium yellow medium, and that's just going to be used with some of the greens for the highlights on the vegetation. And then I have yellow ochre, which is one of my go-to colours, and I'll be using that along with the ultramarine blue to be mixing up uh, the deeper greens in the, the trees. I then have the permanent alizarin, and that will be being used uh, as an underpainting for the green behind the green of the trees. I have uh, white, which we mix with various colours to help lighten them. And for adding depth and darkness, I have a burnt umber. There is no black on there because I don't, I won't be needing that. I'll just be using the the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue to mix up any darks I need. One more colour that I will be putting out will be Naples Yellow. You can see I have that in a big jar and that's because I use it quite a bit. I'm just going to be using the glazing liquid gloss. Now that could be golden, it could be Atelier, it could be an, any number of glosses, but this is the one I'm choosing and I'm just going to pour a little well of it in here so that I can use it as I wish. And that will just help me to thin out some of the paints and to add a bit of gloss to it. The other thing I may use is the Ultra Matte Gel, just to give a little bit of body to the vegetation. So I'm just going to take some of that out and put it in the well next to there and then I can mix it in as I want to. Don't worry if you don't have these things at home, you can do the painting without them. I have my reference image and I'm just going to freehand it in. One thing I won't freehand in is the horizon line. It's really important to get your horizon line exactly straight or that's what people are going to be looking at the whole time they're looking at your painting, the crooked horizon line. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler and I'll be measuring down and I want it to be around about here. I think I'm going to take it about 16. So I just put a little charcoal mark there at the level on either side, ruler across draw a little line across there just vaguely so that I know where that horizon is going to be and then that will make it much easier for me as I progress. A little bit of the red is going to be quite red in there. Just mixing up a little bit of red on my palette and then really just roughing it in. And I'm doing it in little scrubbly motions there so that I've got a bit of a rough edge going on and not worrying about covering every little bit of it, but just to give me some of the bright reds going along there, that will create a little bit of a sing and a zing when they show through the green. It's quite nice painting with complementary colours because it does help give you, set up a nice contrast when you're painting. I'm not putting this on very thickly, I'm just colouring and tinting that canvas there. So that's the main, the trees come up into the sky here as well, um, but I'm going to do that little bit of underpainting once the sky's in, I'll underpaint over the top of the sky. The other area I want to underpaint is 
the creek. So I'm just taking some of my um, bird umber and mixing it in with some of that red already had. What I'm going to be using for that underpainting is some of the transparent burnt sienna in the flow and I'm just pouring that into my palette. It's got a lovely translucency to it. I don't mind a bit of the red from the trees coming through so what I'm doing is just dipping my brush into that and then adding it in this area here just to give that feeling of the creek bed and it's just going to get one coat and then I'll come back into it after it's dry and give it another one. It's mixing in with some of that underpainting which hasn't quite dried yet. I don't mind that, it's giving it sort of an effect of the sandy floor but I will be wanting to deepen that up more to this rich tannin in some places so it's going in like so. That will get moderated a bit once I start putting on the other colours. So let's not get too scared. When you put on these initial underwashes, you can think they're too bright and it's too too much and it's never going to work, but remember you're going to be glazing over the top of it with other colours as well. And again going around the side of the canvas there. So that's the underpainting start. This is going to have quite a lot of purple and blue in it, this, but I'm starting off with the uh, transparency in it as a base. I'm wanting to let those ones dry now, and I want this to dry before I go into the sky because I don't want to be dra dragging sky in it. So I'll just let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll continue. This is all dry now. I'm going to give another application of the transparent but sienna down here and then we'll do the sky so again just taking my burnt sienna on my palette and you can see how it's going on this time and not picking up any of the wet and giving it a lovely golden color this is the color that you get in Tasmania in the war in the rivers and creeks where there's a lot of tannin I'm not sure if you get it in your area, but this is not an unreal colour. This is just how the rivers can look. But it will be changing colour as I add in some of the reflections from the sky. So with acrylics, you can glaze nicely. Because it's interactive, as I said before, it, it can pick up the colours underneath if you haven't let it dry really properly. I like a little bit of variation in this, so I don't mind it picking, don't mind it picking up a bit of the colour. Now we're going to do the sky. So for the sky I'm just taking my clean palette, which is the, the top of my palette, and I'm going to spoon in all the leftovers from my previous sky. So just taking, I have a mix of quite light pale blue, which is just from memory that was cerulean blue with a little touch of phthalo blue and some white. So that I'm just going to scrape up to one end. Now I want to add some darker blue so I'm going to add in some ultramarine blue and just move that around with my palette knife to mix it up. I'll be adding some gloss medium to this, just picking up some gloss medium and dropping it on, giving that a mix around. I need to have a number of blues for the sky and I'll be doing it wet in wet. So I have the, the dry surface there but then I'll be putting the wet paint on and, and blending the wet paint to get a nice gradation from the darker down to the lighter here. What I'll be adding in next is pile of white and just dividing that so that I've got some white mixing it to lighten it off. 
So I have this middle section with the lighter blue. And I'm not going to blend them so much that there's no variation in them. I want some variation. Now I'm going to add in more white and a touch of the thalo blue, which just gives it, you can see it's a brighter blue there, and that is going to just be as it comes close to the horizon that touch of thalo goes in. And adding in even more of the medium, the gloss medium there. Okay. So they're my three colours. What I do now is just grab myself a nice big wash brush. In fact, I won't use that one. I'll use this size. So just a flat wash brush. And I'm going to be adding a bit of water to it as well as the medium. Just picking it up here and working it across the top of my canvas. Just in nice strokes from side to side. I'm not minding it's running down a bit. And I will be painting the top and around the sides as well. And brushing right across the top to create the sky on the top, around the corners. So that's the top of my sky. Now I take the next colour and just sweep it across in a line underneath that. Going around the sides. And so I've got a lighter line and then I'm taking the next colour that we mixed up and running it. just need a touch more water and medium in that. And just running that across there. Now you notice that you get a bit of a line where they're joining and I'll be taking care of that in a moment. Right now I'm just adding in all the, the three layers of the three different colours I mixed up. Going around the sides again. I don't need the gradation to be perfectly blended because I want to have a look of some little um, clouds in there. What I'm going to do is just dip my brush in gloss and give it all a little bit of a just slide the brush down and then up again to try and blend the areas together. And then what I do is take my other brush that has, I want it to be quite dry, so I'm just drying it off on my apron. I'm a bit of a messy painter. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see I, I can never stay clean. So now I'm just taking it, I'm holding it quite close to the end there and then I'm just going to feather like so. In a, a cross-hatching way. And that, that blends those colours into each other as well. And then just a nice smooth one across there. So that's one way of blending it all together. The other way I quite like, which I'm now going to demonstrate to you, is slightly more messy. So in this way, I stick my hand, gather up paint on my fingers, and just move it around. And I like this one. It doesn't give such a um, smooth look to it. It has the look of those light high clouds and as I come down I pick up the lighter colour on my fingers again and move that in. And that's really a lovely way, a nice tactile way of getting a bit of movement into your sky. Just going in again. Now down here I want to go along the horizon so I'm just picking up again with my finger. You can do it with a brush if you don't like getting paint all over you. I quite enjoy it. And I'm just mixing a bit more white into that and bringing it right down to the horizon. And then I'll do that little blend thing again. 
And you can see now why I didn't put though, the red underpainting for the trees up there and at this stage. Now if I want to add some little clouds in there, I don't want them to be pure white, so I just take a, a dob of white, uh, pop it on my palette so it mixes with slightly with the blue, and then I can just run it with my fingers over and get those nice wispy clouds that you can get on a summer's day. And that is going to be my sky. I need to take a rag at this stage and wipe off my hands. And those big brushes that I used for the water, for the sky, I don't want to leave them sitting there like that. So because I have no running water in my studio, I have this laundry liquid container with water in it. And I just pop my brushes in there till I'm ready to take them out to the sink so they don't get dried and wrecked. I don't leave them too long because I don't want their tips um, jamming up against the side of the... We're going to move on now to the horizon line here, to this background hill and the little very faint distant um, headlands and then start moving forward with the water and this uh, patch of trees there. What I want to do out here is just indicate that it's distant so we remember that in the distance because there are a lot of particles in the air the further we're away from something the more particles from pollution and dust and so on so the bluer and the lighter and the more hazy it looks than something that's close up so back here I just want to mix up a color slightly darker than the darkest part of the sky so I've kept my sky color here and what I'll just be doing is using a smaller brush just using a small flat brush to mix up slightly darker colour. I'm going to put a little bit more of that blue in, ultramarine blue into it. Just mix it up on my palette there and then I'm just going to work it into here. You could use a palette knife. I'm just going to be using a brush for this but I'll show you some palette knife techniques with some of the other things. So I'm just bringing out that little headland there in a quite very pale manner. And I've just mixed that blue in on the top of my sky blues so that I've got sky blue coming into the hills and tying it together. And by mixing it there and not mixing it too much, I've got a variation in the blues back there. I'm just going to round that off because it's rounder there. Okay, so there we have that little aspect of it. Now I'm going to be working on this headland here. And that is going to be closer. So it is still going to be bluer than this area, but it's going to be darker and have a bit more uh, green a tinge to it. So what I'm going to do for that is take more of my blue. So a nice big dab of that blue. Just working it in there. And then I'm going to take a tiny touch of yellow ochre. Which I'm just sitting there and then going to work into some of it. Then I'm going to start applying it and see if I actually think I need to make it darker or whether I'm happy with that. At the moment, I'm quite happy with it, so it comes over in this round, and I'm just using my brush to loosely suggest the form there. And as I'm doing that, I'm noticing that I didn't come down low enough there with the sky, so I'll have to fix that, which is why I don't clean off your, your sky colours at this stage. I'm loosely putting in the outline of that, and I'm going to bring it up into the sky there. And then I'll just be pulling it down. I haven't added any more medium, any more gloss to this. I'm just letting it go as it is. What I want to do at this stage is fix that up. And I'm going to just take some of that colour in my finger. Some of that sky colour again. And pop it on. Just using my finger to gently smooth it across those hills. And then I can go back and deepen it. So what I'm doing, so I don't pull the hill colour into my sky, is I'm pull it, pushing it, pulling it across from the sky into the hill. 
If I do it the other way, I'm going to end up with too much of the hill colour in the sky. Now, if it was going to be a misty low cloud coming in, that would be perfect, uh, that little misty area I've got there. But that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to keep adding in a bit more blue and a bit more of the yellow ochre there. And again, not mixing it up too much on the palette. So that I've got this blue, uh, overall a blue look, but with a touch of green from that yellow I'm mixing in. That's the look I'm going for. And again, you don't want it to be uniform, so I'm just letting it mix itself up as it goes. And then if I want something a bit darker, I'm just adding in a dab more of that to get some variation in it. We want some idea of some shadowed areas. And as it comes down here, it's going to be a little bit darker too along the, the water's edge. So just adding in some variation there with the the different amount of mixing and blending I've done with the blue and the yellows. Just cover that whole area and you can see it doesn't take that long. Adding in more blues and a bit more yellow it's got much greener there, so I'm going to put a little bit of the much greener and see if I want to keep some of that as it's coming a little bit further around the bay towards us in this, this area. I'm going to add in a bit more blue now. And just you can see that I'm just mixing that all up on the canvas rather than on the rather than doing too much mixing on the painting itself. Sorry, on the palette itself. Of course you can do it either way, but I, I find it gives more um, interest to do it that way. Let's make that a little bit darker on the edges. And I've still got a little bit of the uh, still back here I've got a bit of that hill coming in, so I'm just taking this time not with my finger, I'm just wanting a brush with a little bit more delicacy and and brushing that in, blending it with the brush on the paper, on the canvas. So there I have sky variations in that um, headland there. Uh, and a, a very distant one. So now it'll be time to put in the water. And this is a really fun part. Before I put in the water, I just want this to dry off a bit because what I want is for the, to be nice and crisp along there and dry. And then I'll just use a bit of masking tape to help me get a very crisp edge there. Not so important here because it's going to be the edges of the rocky bays and inlets along that headland so I don't need to get that crisp but just this part here I want to be very crisp so I need that to be dry. So you can see there are a lot of purples, deep dark blues and purples over the top of the tannin colours so I'll be washing those in in a few washes so now's a good time to do that while I'm waiting for the sky to dry. Unlike pastels, when I'm doing pastels I tend to work from the top down so the pastel dust doesn't fall on what's down below although I do move around a bit but not quite so much as I do in acrylic so here I'm now going to be laying in some of those colours. My palette is now very pale and I'm going to uh, keep that for some little touches up I want to do uh, in the foreground water. But I'm going to swap over to this part of the palette to do the next part which is going to be the wash there. And I'm going to get myself a nice washy brush again. 
I'm going to get myself a nice flat brush there and that's what I'm going to use and I'm going to be putting some purples in and I'm, I'll be mixing my own and I'll be using some of the ultramarine blue with a touch of alizarin crimson. So pop that in and I just want to get it to a nice transparent state and I'm going to put a little bit of gloss into that and then it's just going to be brushed over that underpainting that we did. And that starts to give some interest to the water there. It's going to be bluer over in this area because it's more of the sky colour. So I'm mixing up a bit of that um, bluer colour to go in here. And again, don't worry if it doesn't seem quite right at this stage because you can always keep glazing and reglazing. I do want it to be quite strong here. And I will be adding in some of the light blues as well. But right now it's just those deeper, richer blues. I want a lot of the red to show here and more of the blues to show here. So going back in with a bit more ultramarine washing that in and where the blue is going over that underpainting it's starting to make it purple tones because that's a ready warm underpainting with the blue over the top of it I'm getting some rich variation in that creek bed now and sometimes I just want to put small amounts of variation in it just some sort of ribbons of variation through it where there's some collected uh, debris in the bottom of the, the creek. I'm going to finish that off with a little touch of a much lighter blue from out of my uh, area where I kept the sky colour. And I'm adding a little bit of that into there and just it's more opaque, less transparent because it has some whites in it and that's just going to get lightly. So that is uh, starting to give some depth to that creek there. That can just dry off and in the meantime I can add in some of the sand colour. So my sand is coming through here and th around through there and for the sand I'm going to use a mix of white, some of the Naples yellow and touches of the alizarin crimson because I want it to um, have a tiny pink tinge. If we have a look at the reference again, I'm now going to be working on these sandy areas. So you can see I go back and forth quite a lot when I'm working. And for the sand, I can use a different technique to show you. So this is just a way for me to be able to show you a number of different techniques in the one. So now I'm using the palette knife and just loading it up on there, taking another colour which is the yellow and again not entirely mixing it up, just giving it a few dabs. I need some more of the white, so dabbing that in and actually quite a lot of the white. And then I just pick up stroke a lot up on there and it's going to be running this way and I'm taking it and just dragging it across the surface of the canvas. You end up using a lot more paint with the palette knife because it's picking up a lot. I like it because you can see you get these nice textural marks now as we're coming through here and they add to the painterly quality of your painting. Now you don't have to do it all, you might want to put on an underpainting, which in fact I can use the background that I already underpainted in as the underpainting because it's got those lovely colours that you get in variations in sand. Pulling that around, I will be adding in rocks and so on out through here, but this is just my sand layer. And by 
just pulling the, the palette knife quite firmly through it, I'm getting some nice textural lines there in the sand to relieve it of some of its, can be a bit boring sometimes. I do need a lot more, and you can see I'm using a lot more paint than I was in the other hand technique or the brush technique. But then again, we're much closer now to the viewer. We're trying to demonstrate that we're closer and adding in more texture at this area does help with that illusion of it being much closer in. You can see a bit more texture in the sand. The sand is darker in here in that area because it's the um, it's a bit of shadow there. So just finishing off that and then I'll start putting in the shadows. And to put in the shadows I just mix up a bit more of that sand colour. And before I put in the shadows I should do the other side over here. Lay it on with my palette knife, pulling it around. And I can get a good crisp edge if I want to here. If this was an overhang of sand, I can just use the very sharp edge of my palette knife and pull it to give a nice crisp edge. So that's a really good way of getting a crisp edge using your palette knife, running it, the edge along it, and then using that. And pulling it around to get nice crisp edges. I don't so much want a crisp edge here, I want to indicate that the sand is running down into the, the creek there, so in fact it's going to be a little bit smoother and I'll be running some of the creek back into it in a moment. Dragging out the last bits of my white out of that well. And you can see that I am going through quite a lot of white. Mixing it up and just continue laying it in down here. And having a nice amount of variation in that sand is important for me because sand is not uniform. People walk in it, animals, birds leave tracks in it. And so you end up with little hillocks and hollows and you want to indicate that. And this is a very easy way to do it by just dragging the palette knife across the surface and letting some of the underpainting show through. So again, you can see what I'm talking about. The shadowed areas here are much darker. So we'll be putting those in next. And at this stage, it just looks like various blocks. It's not really very well tied together, but that will, um, we'll be developing that as we go. So now what I'm going to do is mix up more of that sand color, but not too much white this time, because the white can really dilute it. I'm putting in more of the Naples yellow. And I'm adding in some quite deep, dark colors at this stage. Uh, a bit of the brown the burnt umber and, and a little bit more. It just needs quite a bit of that because the white really dilutes it. I don't want to start off too dark. I can add in more darks. I just want to start getting an idea of it. So I'm making this grey sort of colour which will be the wetter sand as it comes down here. And I'm, I'm putting that in now, just sliding it with my palette knife. Sliding it around there as it comes down. And there's sort of a shallow indent there. So that's getting that same grey sort of colour. And a little bit up here. I will be adding in some much deeper darks to that as well. That's just the start of it. And Making the sharp edge there and pulling it down will give you a straight down look and if you want it to be a little bit more angled, pull it across towards you. And so if I'm going for a flatter look there, that's what I'm doing. And then up here I'm going for a, a 
more chiseled look. Here it's going to be quite chiseled, it's quite flat there. And what I want to do is make up a bit of a purpley colour. So I'm putting in the ultramarine blue and a bit of the red mixture, mixing it up. But I do want to make that a little bit of a brown purple too, so I'm putting in a little bit of the burnt umber. And I just mix till I'm happy. A little bit browner. And again, I don't want to do the, all the mixing on, mix everything up too much on the palette. I want to let some of it work for itself here. There's very dark overhangs here, and I'm using this deep, rich purple and brown mixture to suggest the, the very deep. overhang and shadow there and by using the edge of it I get a nice crisp edge against that very sunlit part of the sand. So I'm getting some shadows in there and I might pull you know, a few shadows in that way as well. And then the shadows come in again up here, so adding those in again with the, the side of the palette knife. And there's a little tiny ridge of shadow going around, and I can use the tip of my palette knife to suggest that, or let's go for a brush for that, that part. I can just get a very fine brush, pop it in, and drag it around to suggest a little delicate sort of overhang there that goes around into there. Just a little bit of shadow there. And at this point I can use my little delicate brush for a few other little bits of sand coming down and, and that colour going back just to merge them a little bit. I can mix myself up a little bit more of the white with the Naples yellow and drag just some little bits of that down with the side and the tip of the brush. To soften it up slightly. The thing to be doing is to be stepping back quite often and looking at it and seeing how we think it's going and uh, that's reasonably good. There needs to be a little bit of shadow sort of showing from that and I also want to have some little highlights in there um, of sand that's caught against the uh, some of this sand that's up here which I'm going to re-establish with a lighter mix. So I'm just pulling a bit of the shadow mix into a bit of the lighter sand mix and then I'm going to just jab some little bits of sand, different coloured sands along there. Now to do that and to emphasise the highlights of it, I can take some of the shadow and... Hi everyone! I had slight disaster last night when I was editing the video, the demo video for this painting that I promised you to have up very shortly and one of the files was corrupted. I was 40 minutes into the edit before I realised that my next clip was corrupted and it was the part where I put in the water and the headland, both techniques I wanted to show you. So I'm thinking what can I do? I tried online, decorruptors and all sorts of things and I couldn't fix the file. I went to bed feeling slightly stressed um, but then when I woke up I had a good idea. I have some MDF here and what I've done is cut a little square out of it. I've primed it just as I did it, as you'll see in the video. I've primed it with gesso all the way round and I've given it a little wash of yellow ochre there. What I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to repaint that in a very small format till we get to the stage where I'm going to put in the horizon, the water and this um, background and then in the video, video clip I will just put in that part of it um, as if I was painting on 
it's time to do the horizon now so I'm taking some build some painters delicate masking tape the delicate one so that when I peel it off it doesn't take the paint above it I just put it right across my horizon line there give it a little press down loaded my paintbrush and then I'm just taking it across so just sweeping it across covering the masking tape and the water then I'm just going to keep loading the brush with blues different blues and greens and pulling them through there so on my mixing palette I'm just pulling out some blue that's some ultramarine that's a little bit of phthalo blue mixing them together then pulling them through and running them back and forth so I just get layers of water and you can see they they resemble the ripples that you get in water And I want some light ones and I want some darker ones. So I'm just mixing a little bit of white in on my palette there as I come in a little bit closer and I'm just running it randomly through the water like that so that I get some variation in the water. This won't be just like the big one. Each time I do it, it comes up differently and I don't really want to duplicate the last time. Um, I'm just trying to get some randomness in there. And as it comes in towards the beach, I'm letting it be a little bit uh, lighter because the sand will be sort of showing through the bottom. Out on the horizon, I might make it just slightly darker in a few spots just to emphasize. different water and you can see it's just a matter of picking up the paint on your brush and laying it in there. Now this area here is going to have some rocks on it shortly but up here what I want, excuse my arm in front of you, what I want up here is a bit of a, a green, it was the green from the it's the green from the trees that I'm going to be putting in it. It's sort of reflected down here. And it's the, one of the things I really liked about it. So I'm just mixing up some greeny colour there. That's the green I want. And I've achieved that by just taking some cadmium yellow and mixing it in with the blues that I was already using for the water. And then just laying it in. I can go back into some blues as it comes down. It can get a little bit bluer. So that's the water in. Then I can just gently peel that away. It doesn't take the paint above it. And I didn't, wasn't too worried about this area here because it's up against the headland and it's the shore, it's not the actual horizon. So that can go in a little bit more loosely. Um, and I'll just take some blue on my brush and move it around a little bit to take it up to the headland there. And I'm actually going to bring that headland a little bit further forward because it's supposed to be the sea out beyond that. So just making that a little bit darker and bringing it a little bit further in past the horizon there. And you can see it's quite easy with acrylics to change the, the value and the tone of it by just putting another layer over a top, over the top. This is the area I need to work on now and this is where I'm going to use the palette knife. So I take a, let's put my brushes back in there, bringing over my palette there. And what I do is just mix up some, some colours there. So I'm going to be using ultramarine blue and some yellow ochre. This is what and some yellow ochre. This is what I normally use for my vegetation mix. And just swirl it around on there with my palette knife. You remember that earlier we paint, painted an underpainting of red there because that will help show our help give a bit of a zing when our 
vegetation goes on. So now I'm just loading up the brush, sorry, the palette knife, with some on the tip, not everywhere else, and just gently patting it on. Basically, that's what it's like. It's just like patting it onto that area. Not trying to cover all the red. And up here, I'm letting it just skim over the surface and it's creating uh, like treetop-like areas. And by not mixing it all on the, the palette and letting some of the work be done on the actual board here, I'm getting a nice variation in there. I will want to add in some sunlit areas and I'll be doing that in a minute but right for now I'm just putting in the bulk of that and just with a patting and circular patting kind of motion then for the trees up in the sky it's the same kind of thing just let it skim randomly over the surface there leaving some gaps to be the sky holes and then it starts just to look like treetops and of course I'll have to put in some shadows and some and some branches as well but that's the basic idea of how you would put in the vegetation there what I want to do now is put in just a touch of this colour which is a green gold and it's quite good for Australian landscapes and it's quite good for suggesting the sunlit side of the trees again just dabbing them on and here I'm dabbing them on a little bit more ferociously making a little bit of texture as I go so you can add the, the texture matte gel into here if you want to I haven't for this one so you'll be able to see the difference when you look at the big canvas which I have put some texture gel in. I can even put some even brighter highlights just by dabbing on with a pure cadmium of yellow there just to get some different variation in the, those, that shrubbery. So that's my headland done. I will need to put in the branches so I can do that with just a little fine brush and make myself a little bit of a, a runny liquid and just draw them in another thing you can do is take a palette knife with a very sharp tip and you can just scratch back into there and see how easy that is to create your branches and I often do this with uh, acrylics on particularly on board when I'm, I'm doing them on boards, masonite or MDF or a birch board, whatever. And then I just want to pat it in a few little spots there to cover up a little bit of it with the vegetation. And there I have my branches in. Along this part, again, I'm going to be using the palette knife and I'm going to mix up some rock colour. So it'll just be a bit of, a bit of um, yellow ochre sort of Color, a bit of that and a dark, a bit of dark, and again not mixing them all up, just a little bit, and then using the edge of my palette knife to just pull those out along the edge there, and I can do that down in this area where there's some rocks coming around too. It will look different depending on which palette knife you use. So this one's got this one's got very sharp edges and then it's got round and curved ones and this is a long thin one with some long straight edges and a curved tip. So if I use the one with the long straight edges and the curved tip I can dip it in and put some little bits of highlights along my rocks and make some rounder edges on those rocks and if I use the sharp one I 
just mashing up a bit more colour there, I can put in some sharper edges. I'm trying to be rem remind myself which way the shadows are going here. And the shadows will be coming on the beach that way so later on so that's where I'm putting the shadows on the rocks. And then if you want to you can go back in with a small brush and add in some detail with a brush as well. Move the paint around slightly and get some little details out. There with the brush. So that's how you put in the C, which I've now wiped a bit off with my hand. Just need to be a little bit careful with that. I've put in the rocks, I've put in the C, C through here, I've made a straight horizon using the masking tape and I've laid in some rocks there. I can go back with this very sharp um, palette knife and I can take it and just drag it along there to create ripples around the rocks as well. So that's a good little technique to, to remember. You also want some of the water to go over the top to suggest that there is a, a horizontal surface of the water. So I'm just running a few lines across the surface there. And it's so green here because it's reflecting all those trees. Then I have some more rocks to put in here. So that will be my next um, bit of work to do. And again, I'm going to use that nice sharp palette knife. I already have some of the rock mixture um, done up and it's going to go in here. And of course these are closer too, so they're going to be bigger. And trail away some smaller ones out here. And these will come into the sand and then start going out into the water there. Again, I want a light side to them where the sun's catching on them. I can suggest some ripples coming around the, the rocks by just scraping my um, scraping my palette knife there. Some more back here in the shade, some bigger rocks. I just need to dry a little bit more. At this stage I'm going to put yet another uh, wash over the, the creek here just to increase its luminosity and richness. So this wash is going to be some of the translucent sienna. And then later on I'll go back with another layer of the ultramarine blue to increase the purples. We'll look at the reference and you can see that over in this area there are some shadows and that's what I want to put in next. I'm going to mix it up on this one and I'm going to be taking some of the blue and just watering it right down. I want this to be quite a 
a loose mix and then some reds to give it some purples. I'm going to mix in a bit of gloss with both of those, adding slightly more red over here. And then I'm just going to start drawing those shadows down over the over the sand there. So we've got a lovely shadow bit coming in there and I'm going to add some of these shadows. I'm just going to blue them off a little bit more now. So adding slightly more blue into those shadows and I'm going to run some of the shadows coming down over the rock there. And running. Then we have the shadows in. I'm going to add a little bit of that blue shadowed, um, blue and purple shadows into the, the shadows over here as well. Not all of them, but just some little bit in there that'll help to re to unify the shadows over there with some of the shadows here. I want to put a little bit of um, a more yellowy sort of colour around the edge there too. A bit of the, the yellow ochre. Uh, maybe make it a little bit more red sort of running up into the sand, just where it's a little bit wet around the edges, the sand, and it tends to get that redder look there. And also, some of it's going to be some reflections from up in there, so I'm putting in some darker colour again, and pulling it down into the water there to suggest some of the reflections of that cliffy of the shadow bit there, pulling a little bit of those down. And then down along here I want to uh, suggest the, the water coming over the sand in that edge there and I'll be putting in just a bit of the just a little bit of that transparent colour over the sand to give it a little bit of lightness at the edge to suggest that the water is coming in here. Now I still need to have some more of a blue going over that uh, other edge to suggest the sky blue. So I'll be running in uh, some of the glue I used in the shadow over there. Some ultramarine glue mixed up with a bit of the sky blue just coming in here. And some darker areas on the bottom of that creek there. I'm brushing a few of those through. So 
just suggest some depressions in the sand uh, and some maybe some loose leaf litter that's collected there and made some darker areas. A little bit of sky reflection going on there. And to finish it off, I just want to put a couple of thin, and they're not in my reference, but I want to have slight a little suggestion of a wavelet there along the shawl edge. So I'm just mixing a bit of white with some pale blue. And I'll have a little bit of it coming around here, around these rocks. And then some of it coming along here. Here's the finished painting. We started off with a wash behind it in a nice warm colour, yellow ochres and some siennas. Then I laid in the sky using a brush to start with for a graduated wash from darker down to lighter. Then I mixed some glossing with the paint and use my hand to just smooth it and apply it out and then ran a couple of strips of the white mixed with some of the sky blue through for some low lying clouds. The next thing I did was add in the very pale headland in the horizon, the horizon there and this headland through here. I'd sketched the main lines up in the meantime. Then while I was waiting for that to dry I moved on to this area and this is a tannin creek so it's full of this rich red tannin colour so I painted that in, in, in loose washes, glazes, a very thin acrylic paint. Back up through here I put in some red for the underpainting for the, the um, headland here so that it would show through the green and give it a little bit of a spark because it's a complementary colour to the green and then I added in all the shrubs over the top of that. The sand went in using white mixed with uh, a yellow colour and it's Naples yellow that I've used here and a tiny touch of alizarin crimson. That just got put on with a palette knife to give a little bit of texture as I dragged it across and some of the underpainting I've left to show through in the groove mark so I did both sides. Then uh, these shadows went in with a, a deep purpley blue mixture mixed up from um, an ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson, just a touch of that and some burnt umber and that made the deep dark shadows around the edges there with a few little highlights and some um, more greyed off colours through here. I added in the rocks with a palette knife and all this vegetation was done with a palette knife too and then added in these lower rocks with the little hints of the sun struck on them and then the water all came in. I put a little bit of tape across there, delicate masking tape so that when I peeled it off it didn't take uh, the rest of the paint with it. So I get a nice straight horizon and then laid in uh, different colours of blues going into greens in a very smooth wash using a nice flat bristle brush, brush across there. And then lastly added in these shadows here and for the very final icing on the cake a tiny touch of a pale blue across there for a little bit of froth as a little wave comes and breaks in there. And then ending up with a signature down in the corner to try and balance that out. It's got a nice flow to it. It's diagonal, so we have a diagonal coming in this way, then the diagonal of the sand taking us back, and then we have this outcrop, we go back to this one, back to that one, and then up to the diagonal cloud. So we've got a nice lot of movement going through the painting, through the composition, where that leads our eye in and through the painting. There's some rich colour combinations there. and This month we were talking about colour, and for this, as I said when I posted the reference photo, the two colours that caught my eye in this were this rich tannin colour of the creek and this green reflected down from the shrubbery here. And I think they make the painting. They're complementary colours so even though they're not next to each other they still help the painting to sing and I've added in the reds behind the green in that complementary scheme too. The distance has been achieved by making everything paler, 
bluer and hazier in the background, less detail. And I've also followed that through in the little bits of beaches and rocks back here on the headland. They're not as bright and as light as and as detailed as those rocks in the foreground there. So that's your first full demonstration in acrylics. I chose this subject because it's a fairly simple subject. There's sky, there's a headland with little detail, there's some shrubbery in a very abstract way, there's the sea, the sand and the creek. Not too many elements and not a lot of detail in any of those elements, but it did give me an opportunity to show you using a number to show you how to use a number of different paint applications. I hope you enjoyed that first lesson and that you can see there's a lot of different techniques you can use with acrylic and they don't have to be difficult. What you could do is download the reference image I gave you and use that to paint your own version of this and then paste it on the community for me. I'd really love to see that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.